Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really glad to have this guy back. He's the uh, U.S. representative from Texas's 13th district. Is my friend Ronnie Jackson. Doctor, how are you? Hey, Pax. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Really glad to have you back on. It's been a while. Thank God you won the election. I'm glad that you're there in office. I know you're doing good work because people constantly attack you. If they stop attacking, Ronnie, does that mean that you're not doing it right? That, that means you're dropping the ball. If they're not <laughs> trying to cut your head off, you're not doing your job. For those who are watching and listening, you were the doctor for Presidents Bush, Obama, and for Trump, right? That's correct. You were a great doctor under uh, under Obama. You were sketchy under Bush. And under Trump, you just made everything up. So, I mean, that, That's right. that sort of attack on your integrity, did it bother you at all or did you see it coming? You know, I saw it coming. It used to bother me, but be honest with you, one of the reasons I'm effective right now is, is honestly because I don't really care what they say about me anymore. Yeah. And I think once you get to that level, once your skin gets thick enough and you're like, hey, I don't care. I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm going to speak my mind and I just don't care what they say about me. You you just become a lot more effective. They, they just can't hurt you as, as much as they uh, did before. You know, prior to that. And, and again, I, I'm, I'm so glad that you're the guy. When you were still the doctor for the White House um, and you answered those questions from the media, it was so stupid to watch them ask you questions like, did he have bone spurs? Is he on cocaine? It was just so dumb. You walked out. You gave a very clinical uh, you know, re- response where the patient said, yes, tell them how I am. And you were perfectly honest about it. Um, but the media wanted to make something out of it. Conversely, let's look at the current president. You've got a guy who clearly, I keep saying he's lost something on his fastball because I'm not a doctor, but but looking at it, I can compare it to my grandmother who died with Alzheimer's. I see what's happening with him. He loses his place. He doesn't say anything for, for 15 seconds at a time sometimes. He constantly says, I'll be in trouble if I answer your question. He said that four, five, six times, and that's a real fear that I see in this guy, and he doesn't seem to know what he's talking about. He doesn't pull out note cards every time. We've seen Joe Biden. We've got video and film of Joe Biden for 40 years. This isn't the same guy, is it? No, not at all. And like you said, even though he has cards, they give him the cards with the answers to the questions. They tell him what reporters to call on. He knows what the questions are going to be. They yeah. have talking points for every question he's going to be asked. And he still struggles. And you're right. You know, when I did President Trump's physical... I mean, I don't think this this will not happen when Biden's physical is done and when his doctor briefs it. But President Trump told me, I asked him, sir, because it's really up to the president what they want and what they want to, you know, to release to the press and what they don't. I, you know, I would say I'd encourage them to release everything. I mean, yeah. for the for the most part, the public has a right to know. But when I asked President Trump that question, he told me, he said, give them everything. He goes, I don't have anything to hide. Just give them everything. I had every single piece of data we had there. I had all of his labs there. I had all of his cardiac testing. I had everything laid out. I made everything completely transparent and available to everyone and including his cognitive test. And so we have pushed out. I have pushed out. I have wrote a letter telling his asking the president and telling his medical staff that we as American people expect the same thing from him and his presidency. We expect him to have a physical exam done. We expect that to include cognitive testing and we expect to get all the results from that. We want to be briefed on every single thing that was done and we want all the answers because we need to know is he or is he not really prepared and really capable of being our commander in chief and our head of state. And all evidence to date says, no, he's embarrassed as overseas. Like you said, he shuffles around. He stares off into space. He doesn't know where he's at. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what the topic is. He gets stuck in the middle of a thought and cannot get himself out of it. These are all things that aren't just regular gaffes that Joe Biden's been prone to for 40 years. This is something different. These are some real cognitive issues. Ronnie Jackson, Texas.com. Ronnie Jackson, TX.com. It's uh, U.S. Representative Ronnie Jackson, Texas's 13th District uh, Representative in the U.S. House of Representatives. I had uh, Dr. Ben Carson on, the former HUD secretary, who said he believes it's elder abuse. Uh, are you on that boat? Yeah, you know, I said the same thing. I said it's it's sad that, it, you know, the White House has traditionally been a symbol of authority and, and it's been impressive. And, and, and around the world, it, it sent a message to everybody of power and authority. And right now, it really looks like an assisted living facility. It really does. Every day, it's more and more like they're just rolling him out there and, uh, you know, just for, for a minute or two, just hoping that they can get him in front of the camera for a couple seconds and he doesn't stumble too badly and then just putting him back away and tucking him away somewhere. And it really is. I mean, there, there are a lot of people that are benefiting right now in the West Wing from his presence, from him being president, because they have these high profile jobs right. that they wouldn't have if he wasn't there. And I think these people are really should be held accountable for encouraging this. And for, for like you said, it, 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 to some extent, it is elder abuse.
It's uh, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, District 13, Republican in the great state of Texas. Let's talk about the Texas delegation that got on planes, chartered jets, uh, to the tune of $100,000, went to Washington to to not do their jobs. They will be brought back here. They'll come back to Texas eventually. They will uh, form the quorum eventually, and the voting law is going to be passed. But they very bravely and proudly and, and sarcastically took pictures of themselves on these planes with no masks on. Now, I flew recently. I don't like wearing a, a mask, Ronnie. I hate it. Um, I can't breathe very well, but I get it. It's mandated. I have to wear it until such a time as I don't have to. None of them were masked up. Now, six of them we know of have COVID-19. We're not sure what's going on with the vice president. Talk to me about who these people showed themselves to be. To me, they look like a bunch of elitist idiots that that made fools of themselves, and some of them are now suffering from COVID-19. Do you see it the same way, or is there something else going on here? No, absolutely. First and foremost, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. And and they, they do look like fools now. They look like idiots. And this didn't work out well for them. They were pitching themselves as martyrs and heroes and went up there and, you know, they were loving the cameras and all the attention they were getting. And now they're not so much. You know, once they get done with their quarantine here, we need to get them back to the state of Texas. They need to do their job. But they've embarrassed themselves. They look like fools right now. They got together. These were the people that were out there pushing every day, talking about mask mandates and all kinds of, you know, and mandatory vaccines and right. all the stuff that the Dems are pushing. And then these people, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, Pax, there is statistically no way that all of them that got sick right now that have they're tested positive have had that vaccine. The vaccine numbers say that there's no way that, that all six of them uh, that, that tested positive actually had the vaccine and tested positive. Some of the people did not get the vaccine, yet they're out there and they're saying they did. I want to see proof. I want to see the documents that show that they got the vaccine and they got sick because I will be willing to bet that almost all of them, if not all of them, did not get the vaccine despite their rhetoric and the things that they've been saying for the last few months. So they are total hypocrites. They're hypocrites. They get on the plane, the rest of us. I was on the plane the other day, uh, coming down here yesterday. I was, on, I was stuck in an airport or stuck stuck on the plane uh, from 11 o'clock for over 24 hours. I was stuck in the airport on a plane. I had to wear a mask the entire time. Yet these idiots get on this plane, take their mask off, and they think it's a big party to go to D.C. and get a bunch of press and and look like, you know, there's some, you know, they're they're martyrs and heroes. Well, they look like absolute fools and hypocrites. Yeah, you, you, you actually made a point that I hadn't thought of because I'm a very, maybe I'm naive sometimes because I believe a lot of what I see until it's proven wrong. But I didn't even consider that some of them might be lying about getting the vaccine. Vaccine. They're all right. saying they got vaccinated. They haven't shown us proof. They just said it. So uh, at right. the end of the day, um, I know that the NIH and the CDC were at odds with each other about whether you can still get COVID even if you are vaccinated. It seems to be that you can still get it, but you won't suffer the same sort of symptoms and the intensity of the, system, the symptoms if you've been vaccinated. Is that your belief as well? I, th- I think you could probably can. I would say, you know, n- never say never. Yeah. I think it's highly unlikely that you're still going to get it if you got. Well, you wouldn't get six. So uh, six of them wouldn't, right? I mean, six is a right, lot. I mean, it's of, not just the exactly. outlier. That's my point. Like, you know, th- you know, half the plane there and you ended up with it. There's no way. There's no way they all came there vaccinated and all these people got it. So, like you said, I would like to see the evidence, the actual documents that demonstrate that they got this vaccine because I bet they do not exist. But, you know, not only did they did they get it themselves, but they've spread it to other people. I saw right. on the news a while ago that, that one of Pelosi's aides had it now, uh, potentially from contact with them. They went and they met with the vice president and, you know, exposed her. Uh, I mean, th- th- their their behavior, if you believe their rhetoric that the, over the last few months is completely reckless. Yeah, and it uh, and it's just it, it's mind boggling that, uh, that, that that this has turned out this way and that they're, you know, and they still have the mainstream media covering for them. Let's make, make no mistake about totally. it. You know, the, the mainstream media is not talking about it that much they're trying to cover open it'll just go away but it's not going to go away because we're going to keep talking about it it's uh, dr ronnie jackson district 13 republican the great state of texas L- let me ask you about vaccine mandates i haven't taken the vaccine that's not to tell my audience not to get it i am 54 right. years old i'm in good shape i work out i don't have any pre-existing health conditions i don't feel as though i'm necess- I- I- i'm somebody who necessarily needs to get it if you feel like you you want to get it go ahead and get it but the fact is this is not fda approved it's got emergency usage only we haven't done all the clinical studies that we have to and i don't feel like i need it i, I feel like i'm healthy enough uh, I- is it okay that i have that mindset or do you think that the government should tell me that i must get that shot in my arm or else we're going to come after you. 
A hundred percent, it's okay that you have that attitude. That's the exact same attitude I have. I'm your same age. I did not want to get the vaccine. I had no intention of getting the vaccine. I have no comorbidities. I'm otherwise fairly healthy. I could lose a little weight, but I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good shape. So I, I was not planning to get that vaccine. I got it because I know we have some trips coming up, some Codales, and I know for a fact that Nancy Pelosi will not let me travel on Codales because she has that much authority and that much power, which is wow. a shame here in D.C. She controls a lot of that. So I got the vaccine just so I could do my job as a member of Congress because of Nancy Pelosi's attitude and her rule here in Congress. But otherwise, I wouldn't have got it, to be honest with you. Now, I'll say I told my parents to get it. They're close to their 80s. They have comorbidities, diabetes and heart disease and things like that. I yeah. told them the second they could get it to get it. I told my sister, who's a renal transplant patient and immunosuppressed, to get it as soon as she could get it. But on the other hand, I told my kids, don't get it. I don't think they need it. And if they start trying to give it to kids, to young kids, to school age kids, I'm going to lose my mind. There's just no reason for this. This is an independent, individual decision that every single person should be making, and minors, their parents should be making it for them, and they should be able to they should be able to opt out of getting any of these vaccines for their kids, especially because this is all based on risk benefit. Right. The risk of the of the vaccine, which we know there's some stuff out there. Every vaccine has a risk. Let's not fool ourselves. Every medical treatment has a risk. This is new technology, too. Let's not forget that. This is mRNA. We don't have vaccines that are developed like this before. Right. It's brand new technology. Like you said, it's still being used under emergency youth author, authorization. I say sometimes that it's an experimental vaccine. I get a lot of pushback from that. But technically, it is. We're still gathering data. It's not FDA approved. So it's still in the experimental phase. And so there are so many reasons why a lot of people that, 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 you know, that otherwise wouldn't get sick from this and wouldn't die from this, like young kids should not get the vaccine. So I'm not an anti-vaxxer in any shape, form or fashion, yeah. but I think that this vaccine is an individual decision based on your individual risk benefit. And the government does not have the right to tell us what that is. Ronnie Jackson, TX.com. He's District 13 Republican, great state of Texas. What, one last quick one. Um, we're getting such strange information, 180 degrees different. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. If you're within six to eight feet, wear a mask. If you're not within six to eight feet, don't worry about it. Don't wear a mask. Now we have to double mask it. Masks are silly. Masks are good. Why don't you wear the mask? The vaccine isn't necessary for kids. The World Health Organization just said that two weeks ago. Suddenly that disappeared from the ether. Nobody sees that story anymore. And like you said, kids, generally speaking, don't need to get it. But in Pennsylvania, parts of it, Ronnie, kids as young as 11 can go and get it without their parents' consent. So I'm confused about what we're supposed to do as Americans to protect ourselves, protect our families, and make a good decision when those who are telling us or giving us the guidance have given us completely different guidance for a year and a half. What do we do? Well, to the extent you can, you just use good common sense. Like I said, if you have a medical comorbidity or you're at risk from this disease, from potentially from getting this disease, if you get it, then get the vaccination. If you get the vaccination, you don't need a mask anymore. OK, you don't need to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. You know, if your kids, you don't need to. Kids don't need to wear a mask. Kids don't get it. If they get it, they don't spread it and they don't get sick from it. So yeah. kids should not be wearing masks. And I'm sure the teachers union and all these morons that think that they know better than we do are going to start coming out of the woodwork and in the near future when school starts back and they're going to start demanding that kids wear masks at school. And that is ridiculous. Is. But what you need to do is just make your own decision. And if you're, if you're unvaccinated and, and you don't, you're not worried about it, then you don't need to wear a mask either. It's your life. You can take your life into your own hands and you can make your own decisions. And uh, if you're around a lot of people that are, that are vaccinated, we, we, we develop herd immunity anyways. And we're not, they're not even considering the natural immunity that so many people in this country already have that have already had it and have natural immunity from it. And that natural immunity, all indications are, is probably lifetime immunity. But you won't hear the people talking about that because no for the left, this vaccination, the, ma the mandates, the mass mandates, the vaccine mandates, they are a tool by which they exercise control over your life. They love it. It is uh, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, the former White House doctor, now District 13 Republican, great state of Texas, RonnieJacksonTX.com. Ronnie, thanks a million. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Let's do it again soon, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, Pags. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. We're back after this. Stay right here.